George Takei became a star alongside William Shatner in his role as Mr. Sulu on the original Star Trek TV series. And all these years later, a star's trek goes on right here on planet Earth. Michelle Miller brings us up to date. Audiences have gotten used to George Takei, taking them to surprising places. Captain, something there on the screen. And Taurus too. As Mr. Sulu, the senior helmsman aboard the USS Starship Enterprise. War Factor 3, Mr. Sulu. War Factor 3, sir. With its unforgettable five-year mission. To boldly go where no man has gone before. Isn't it amazing, in three more years, Star Trek is gonna be celebrating its golden anniversary. The ongoing popularity of that original TV series and subsequent feature films Warp six. have made George Takei a worldwide star. I may not have trekked uh, through the galaxies uh, in reality, but I have trekked all over this planet. Australia, Asia, Latin America, Europe, but of all the exotic places he's been, whether on this planet or beyond, George Takei is ever mindful of this place. A 500-acre plot of land in southeast Arkansas, where his journey began. This was the south end of the, of the uh, camp, and that was the north end. Rower, Arkansas, now just a fallow field, looked a lot different when the Takei family arrived by train in 1942. George was just five years old. This was a concentration camp. We were all concentrated, densely concentrated. We happened to look like the people that bombed Pearl Harbor and put in prison camps simply because of our race. His father, a successful Los Angeles dry cleaner, and mother raising George and his siblings, were among the more than 110,000 Japanese Americans sent to relocation centers like these, all in the defense of so-called national security during World War II. Ten camps in all scattered throughout the country. We were ordered out of our home at gunpoint, and my mother was the last to come out and she had tears rolling down her cheek. It was a memory that I can, I can never erase, to see your mother crying and as we were being ordered out of our home. Their new home at Rower was a small single room in a tar paper barrack. I went to school and began every school day morning with a pledge of allegiance to the flag. I could see the barbed wire fence and the sentry tower as I recited the words, with liberty and justice for all. His family would spend eight months at Rower and then another three years interned at a maximum security camp in Tool Lake, California. In 1946, his family was released, but George couldn't escape the racism of the day. I started school in Los Angeles and the teacher continually called me the little Jap boy, which stung. It hurt. It was a different teacher, Ms. Lewis, who gave him a gift that set him on his way. Thanksgiving was coming, and she organized a Thanksgiving play, and she cast me as the Indian chief that welcomed the pilgrims. And I still remember the line I had. What was it? Yo hey, yo hey, mitakula na humpu. Omnichi nichopi. <laughs> That's a lot to remember. <laughs> Though just a grade school play, Takei was hooked. He studied acting at UCLA and landed small roles in television and films. But parts for Japanese American actors were limited. You have trouble in Seattle? Why'd you ask? White men never work in Alaska for Chinese wages, if not big trouble. His big break came in 1965, when his agent got him an audition in front of Gene Roddenberry, who was about to launch the sci-fi series Star Trek. Well, that was a game changer. It was, it was, it broke the stereotypes. No animal, no people, no worries. 
Just what the doctor ordered. <laughs> right, doctor? I mean, I was a regular, visible, talking, walking, fencing presence. You either leave this bar bloodied or with my blood on your songs. <laughs> Oh, you were handsome. <laughs> Can I just say? <laughs> you were hot. And I felt hot. <laughs> Take over, Mr. Sulu. I'll be in the transporter room. Aye, aye, sir. Remarkably, Star Trek lasted only three seasons. With his newfound celebrity, Takei tried his hand at politics. He ran for the Los Angeles City Council and lost fought for Japanese-American reparations, and won, putting his very public face on causes that were close to his heart, all except one. It must have been hard to be in the closet. It was. It was. Because I had resigned myself, accepted the fact that I would live a part of my life closeted. That all changed when a California marriage equality bill was vetoed in 2005. Angered by that decision, Takei came out publicly, eventually marrying his longtime partner, Brad Altman, in 2008. I thought, you know, my career might be over. But quite the reverse of that happened. Okay, I'm a little confused here. Oh my, can I help? <laughs> Not that kind of confused and popping up all over the internet. Takei has found a new generation of fans, millions of them, on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. I have to say, you kinda go off the rails. How? Well, I saw your dance moves. <laughs> Sexy and I know it. It embarrasses Brad no end. <laughs> embarrassed for him, George. Oh, my. His cheerful online persona has helped to raise awareness about his next very personal project. But if I also change when folded up this way. Bringing a musical inspired by his early life in the internment camp to Broadway. It's called Allegiance. Let them gain their spotlights down, but smile real nice. Just put up and shut up, cause you're in paradise. It's made for America. It's a story about the glory of our democracy, but also its fallibility. It's a musical that teaches us that lesson. A lesson he learned in these fields in southern Arkansas and kept with him his entire life. And though he made his name in the sci-fi reaches of outer space... Our barrack was right here, block six. At age 76, uh, two, George two, Takei two, hopes that his real legacy will be closer to home. There's nothing I recognize here. It's totally changed, but it has defined who I am.